The time has come, ladies and gentlemen. The mystery booster box just released today. So much value packed in these particular boxes. I'm really excited to open up one of these. Uh, I actually opened up a couple of packs at the local game store, and the packs are just absolutely packed with with value. Obviously, the prices are going to drop over time due to the mystery booster box, and most of these cards haven't been reprinted in some even like 20 plus years. Um, but the mystery booster box, it's awesome. I love it. I'm uh, going to be drafting it tonight, which I'm really excited about. I got a couple extra boxes that we're going to draft on our game nights. And uh, I'm just really looking forward to seeing what we get out of here. Tons and tons of value for those commander players out there. Um, just really things that have been needed to be reprinted for a long time. And maybe we even have a chance of getting the amazing Mana Vault. Which has dropped considerably in price since this came out. Um, but you know, pulling any one card in this is like pulling basically like a mythic just due to the fact that there's so many cards in the set. Uh, but it's really cool how these packs are actually set up. Let's push these back just a little bit. So we have in every slot here, we have a chance to get a common and an uncommon for each color. So we got two whites. We got two blue. Oh, we got our first uncommon in the in that slot there. We got Thought Scour. I just love that some of these classic cards are coming back. And I just I love the artwork on some of these. It just looks so nice. I'm really excited. This is probably one of my favorite sets that Wizards has ever released. And I just want to open tons and tons of boxes of these. Because uh, not only is there a lot of value in it, at least for now, we got Pilgrim's Eye. And then Angel's Destiny, our first mythic. I don't exactly know how much this particular one is worth, but I will put a value of the entire box at the end. So I'm not going to put them um, when we get each card, but I will put the entire value that we pulled at the very end of this video, if you're curious. Okay, I thought that was another mythic for a second. So we got Chasm Skulker. Look at the artwork on that card. It's just it's so nice. I love it. So we'll put uh, our rares there. And then at the very end, you do have a chance to get one of the 121 extra foil cards. So we got the Noggle Bandit. Look at the artwork on that dude. I like the foils. I really want to get some of the the old like border, just classic artworks and foils. I'm really excited about that. Now, in these boxes, there are only 24 packs. But man... I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments below about the mystery booster packs. If you've opened up any, I want to know what you got. There's is that an uncommon? Yeah, that's an uncommon in the in that first slot. Another uncommon. Dark Steel Mutation. Gun missing. Another uncommon. The City Watch Sphinx. You do have chances here to get quite a few uncommons. You got the Skulking Ghosts. I love the the old artworks. I kind of wish they would do like a a retro print for one of the new sets or something like that where they kind of stylize the cards on like the the classic artworks. I've been saying that for a while here. The Mask of Memory. Oh, Magus of the Moat. That's a $9 rare currently, although it may go down. I actually got when I opened up packs at the local game store, I actually here, let me pull those out so I can show you what I did get. Ah, Rikuta of the Guard and Alchemist's Refuge. Add one to your mana pool and you can pay a green and blue to cast non-land cards this turn as though they had flash. That's actually kind of nice. I like that. Uh, but I'll show you what I got. I opened up two packs before this. So I got uh, Soul Ring, Delay and Foil, the Trailblazer's Boots, a Phyrexian Metamorph, Chromatic Lantern, Magus of the Moat. So I pulled two of those already. And the meandering tower shell, as are the nice cards we got out of there. Um, but I just wanted to go through the first few packs kind of slowly, so you could see exactly. Uh, I can't open these packs. Like the bottom is like super duper sealed, but it's a, it's a little bit more comp. I guess we could put the commons and uncommons in one pile. Although there are some actually good value in the uncommons un uncommon slots. Oh, there's a a war of the spark card already. That's fun. What what is it? it's upside down? That's got to be good luck. The Court Husser. Kusa! Vampire. We're getting quite a few uncommons. Street Wraith here. Impact a Tremors. Roast. Getting roasted. 
There we go. Raph Caption Ships Mage. So there's our... Um, ooh. I do like Eldrazi. Kind of wanted to make... Is that... I think that's an uncommon. I can't really tell. Then we got the Mystic Confluence and Sarkon the Mad. That is a foil mythic planeswalker in foil. Wow. That's nice. I don't even know what set that's from. I have no idea what the value on this is currently. Uh, I actually didn't look up the value of the actual... Um, I guess we'll put that on our mythic side. The value of the foils. Uh, just because they weren't really... I don't think they were available on MTG stocks or anything like that yet. We got our piles all sorts of a disaster. So we got two mythics so far. One in that foil slot. So I don't think that uh, foil mythic counts towards our mythic count in the box. I'm just curious actually to see what we're going to get. I'm going to start putting the uncommons in the same pile just so we can go through these a little bit quicker. Look at that. Urbog Uprising. It's such a weird looking card. Seismic Shift. Dragon Scarred Bear. The angriest bear in all of the world. The Ether Castle Knight. Blahusk. Ooh, there's a nice old card. The Phantom Centaur. Protection from Black. Phantom Centaur comes into play with three plus one plus one counters on it, so it's a two zero for for four. If damage would be dealt to Phantom Centaur, prevent that damage and remove a plus one plus one counter from it. So this would be good in like a proliferate deck where you can continuously add plus one plus one counters to it. Wait, is that another mythic? Liliana Death's Majesty. Wow. She looking so pretty. I don't think that's got a lot of value to it, but that's our third mythic so far. And then we've got Codex Shredder. Target player puts a top card of his or her library into his or her graveyard. That's nice. And then return target card from graveyard to your hand. Ah. I like that. I do, I do, I do. So three mythics in... F would we have opened four packs so far? That's cool. Hopefully we didn't just like plow through our mythics. Are they like stacked? We've been grabbing from essentially the same pile so far. And I think we've got mythics... In that whole side already. That'd be interesting if these are stacked. They've been... What's going on here? Upside down card again? It's good luck, you know? The brine elemental of upside downy good goodluckness. Dirge of the dread. Of dread. <laughs> I, just, I just really like the artwork on that one. Tarfire. I, I'm going through these kind of slowly because a lot of these artworks might be... And cards in general might be cards that people have really not seen in a very long time. We've got the Kazanz Kazandu Refuge. Gift Leaf Palace is our rare. Enters the battlefield, you may reveal an elf card from your hand. If you don't, it comes into play tapped. Interesting. A swamp and a not swamp. Anger of the Gods. And then... Ooh. That's, um... Future Sight, I believe, is what that's from. Uh, this one here. So that's our foil rare. Enchant instant card in graveyard. Whenever you play a sorcery spell, copy the enchanted instant card. That sounds really nice. So spell weave volute in uh, volute. Yeah, volute in foil from Plains Chase. Not Plains Chase. Oh my God, Future Sight. Way back in the dizzy. I noticed there's quite a, quite a few Future Sight cards in here actually. All right, let's go through these a little bit quicker, even though I really like looking at some of the older cards. Renegade Tactics. Strength in Numbers. Actually, that's a nice green card. Till the end of turn, target creature gains trample and gets plus X, plus X, where X is the number of attacking creatures. Got to put that in the squirrel deck. Hell yeah. I have an epic squirrel deck commander, or a squirrel deck, squirrel commander deck. I know words. The struggle is real. <gasps> Bloom Tender. Oh my god, yes. That is a wonderful rare hit. $30 card right there. It was 54 I would not be surprised after the hype of this set goes down that this card goes back up in value. For each color among permanents you control, add one mana of that color to your mana pool. Oh my god, that is such a good card. And it's going into the squirrel deck. Oh my god. Then we got Teferi Temporal Archmage. Another mythic, so that's four mythics. And then another foil... Is that a mythic? Another foil mythic. Aurelia's Furry. I, don't, I, don't, I know it's Fury, but I'm going to call it Furry. Deals X damage divided as you choose among any number of target creatures and or players. 
tap each creature dealt damage this way. Players deal dealt damage this way can't cast non-creature spells this turn. Oh, that's a cool. That's a really nice foil mythic. All right. Good lord. Oh, Bloom Tender. That was one that I really wanted. I was actually about to purchase it for the the Squirrel Commander deck, and then because I ended up switching it, I was using Morphon, but I, I switched it to a Traxa just for fun. Uh, or I might switch it to the a Golos Commander. So it's a Squirrel Stacks is what it is, and it's a lot of fun to play. If you want a video on my Squirrel Stacks Commander deck. Pulling out packs upside down like a crazy man. Completely forgot to put the mic in front of my face. Good job. So, a complete disaster there. What is... <laughs> Every once in a while we get one blue card that's just upside down. Just doing its own thing. Trying to throw us through a loop. But yeah, sorry for not having the mic in front of my face there for a second. That was, uh... Ooh, there we go. There's a nice old card. Belby's Portal. Comes into play. Choose a creature type. Put a creature card of the chosen type from your hand into play. Oh, that'd be fun for any kind of, like, tribal deck. And we got Angel of the Dire Hour. Getting a lot of angels today. Ah, Send Triplets in Foil. Another mythic. Oh, man. That looks just so nice. That is cool. Okay. I don't know what the value of send triplets is, but um, it's a beautiful card, regardless of the price on that one. I didn't, I can't believe Modern Horizons is in here already. Like, let's just throw some Modern Horizons uncommons in here. I mean, we only just released it. I do love Modern Horizons, though. One of my other favorite sets that has come out recently. Ah, I have this in my stacks deck, the Seder Enchanter. Ronus Monument. Ah, another Urza's card. Avalanche Riders. Is unaffected by summoning sickness, so it's got haste. Comes into play, destroy target land. So I just realized we had a, an issue with um, the recording. And we weren't actually recording, but we pulled a Lotus Petal in a pack. We got the Gilded Baron there. Uh, Mage Rite Stone. Uh, Birds of Paradise. That's what we pulled. It wasn't a terrible pack, especially getting that Lotus Petal. That's like an $8 uncommon or common. Is it? Yeah, an $8 common, just because it hasn't been printed in literally forever. And then we started recording this pack. So nothing too crazy in this particular pack. Um, I'm definitely excited to see how the prices for these holdouts or, you know, kind of go over time. Right now, pretty much all the cards have been kind of cut in half from their previous value. But I don't know how, how like, big the print run and stuff like that is. The can Contagion Clasp, that's a really cool-looking artifacts uh enters the battlefield put a 1-1 counter on target creature and it's got the ability to proliferate that's kind of nice the felidar sovereign and then ooh, that is a cool looking foil i have no idea what it's worth not of this world counter target spell or ability that targets a permanent you control an eldrazi nice okay so i'm gonna that's an uncommon foil, I think. I can't tell. I think it's an uncommon foil. We'll put that there. It's just a really, really cool-looking card. Uh, but uh, now it's kind of hard to say how much we made. I had figured it out after nine packs. The value was at about 110. With that Lotus Petal, that puts us in that previous pack. Everything in that previous pack puts us around, like, uh, 120. And we're halfway through the box now. I swear, the bottom, I'm struggling to, like, open. But I'm really curious to see how the prices go over time for all of these. They're going to stay like an instant like 50% cut on like the value of all the cards in the set. But I mean most of them the price is reduced due to the fact that they haven't been reprinted in so so long. We got the Hexplate Golem. Golem. Ooh, who are you? Another mythic. Prufix God of the Horizons. I don't think that's a very high value mythic. Not 100% sure. But then we've got the Savage Knuckle Blade. And then for our foil, Witch Blade Orb. A rare foil. Okay. I think we've pulled seven mythics out of the set so far. Or in this particular box, seven mythics. That foil slot, having the ability to get mythics in that foil slot um, is is kind of really nice, especially those Sin Triplets. 
Um, the Sin Triplets value is pretty darn good. I think it was like 20 bucks, something like that. Noxious Dragon. There we go. Goblin Burrows. One target goblin creature gets plus two, plus zero. Ah, uh, there we go. There's a nice old card. Brimstone Dragon. Definitely not high value on this particular card, but I do quite like the artwork on it. It looks nice. Uh, I think that can go there. Yep. And then we got Commits. I don't know what the price on that is. And then we got the Mist Hollow Griff. Wait, is that another Mythic? It is. Mist Hollow Griffin. Another Mythic. That's the eighth Mythic. Flying, you may cast Mist Hollow Griffin from Exile. All right. And it's a four cost, three, three. Foil Mythic. Man. Just all over the place. Good lord. This, I mean, it's got less packs in it than your traditional boxes, but way, way more value and way more mythics. This is such a fun set to open. I can't wait to draft it tonight. Got another upside down blue card. I don't know if I've ever... Well, the, clearly we got a mythic in the last pack, so it's not like every time we get... Oh, we got an upside down red. Maybe we're getting super good luck on this particular one. Could it be the most expensive card in the set coming? Could it happen? Tower Gargoyle. Put that in the Uncommons. Jungle Shrine. Nice. Enters the battlefield tapped. Actually, that's pretty darn good land. And then we got Karen Wanderer. And then for our... Wait, is that a... So double rare on that pack. The Mirari Conjecture. And then Sheltering Ancients. Foil Uncommon. All right, so the upside down packs definitely don't have mythics in them, I think. I haven't really been paying attention to the earlier stuff. But uh, value so far has been pretty good. I don't know why I'm struggling so bad to open these particular packs. All right, but I think we can go through a little bit quicker now. I mean, obviously, I mean, we're opening almost different cards in every single pack, which is just really cool. And it makes for some really fun openings. I thought we just got two. We just got two from the same set on that particular pull. Temptation Blade. I don't even know where I'm sorting cards anymore. Violent Ultimatum. Destroy three target permanents for... I mean, that's expensive to only destroy three target permanents. But I mean, I guess it can come in pretty handy, so that's a rare. And then we got Supreme Verdict, another rare. Destroy... Can't be countered. Destroy all creatures. And then Flamekin Harbinger. Foil Uncommon. If this video does well, I think I might do a couple more box openings of these. I know I, I, I purchased a few boxes, so that way we can do drafts for like our... Are we another upside down blue card, which means there's no mythic in here, right? Every time we get an upside down card, I don't think we've gotten a mythic. Or have we? I don't even know anymore. There we go. Ooh, Rhystic Study. Very, very nice common card. The most expensive common card in the set. It's $20. Whenever an opponent plays a spell, you may draw a card unless that player pays one. I just purchased one of these, too. Um, but now I have I have one in my Squirrel deck, and I can put one in my Urza deck. I'm going to put that in the Mythic pile, because it's basically more expensive than the majority of the Mythics in the set. We got Gaunti, Lord of Luxury, and then Changeling Hero. I've never even seen this card. Oh, it looks so derpy. Kind of looks like it has like a shark head on it. That's cool. Ristic Study, very, very good pull. Still holding its value as well. I think it's still $20 even in this particular set. It may have been obviously more than that before. But it's a pretty darn good card. All right, no upside down cards so far. Maybe we'll get another mythic. Come on, baby. Cold Steel Heart. I think that's actually a pretty decent uncommon. Enters the battlefield, choose a color, and we can add one mana of uh, the chosen color, which is nice. We'll put that there. Wind Nakotli? Is that what that says? Nakotl? Oh! <laughs> Sevala! Selvala. Yes, you are such an expensive card. But you're still a really, really good pull. Pretty much we've pulled almost all of the really... Oh, another delay. That's another $8 uh, foil uncommon from Future Sight. But Salvala, that is a wonderful pull for this. Oh, the value just keeps going up. And we got a Mythic and a non-upside-down pack. 
Oh my goodness. I, I'm actually really excited to see what the complete value is going to be in this particular set. I know this video is a lot longer than normal, but that's because we, we're kind of just showing off all the cards. Just because there might be... Like, this card is old, I think. Ren's Run Vanquisher. Rosan Tusker! Alright. Consulate Dreadnought. Ooh, Pestilence. At the end of each turn, if no creatures are in play, sacrifice Pestilence. Uh, and then you can pay one black to deal one damage to each creature in play. That's a nice card. I'm going to put that there. I think that's not too bad. Ooh, Aetherflux Reservoir. Not a terrible uh, rare. And then a Foil Ogre Gatecrasher for our uncommon foil in that pack. I love the old style cards. I wish they would kind of just do... I, I mentioned this earlier. Can you open, please? There we go. I wish they would do like a an old school style set coming like in the future. I just love the way the old cards look. And clearly they can reprint them. Uh, upside down pack. There's not going to be a Mythic in here. what we got going on here. Wait. Nope, that's a rare. By Rexian Soulgorger. Cumulative upkeep, sacrifice a creature. Okay, so that's a rare. Oh, another mythic. Queen Marchessa. Is that ten? And another mythic! Maelstrom Nexus. So a double mythic pack, one with a foil. So we got Queen Marchessa, and then Maelstrom Nexus. First spell you play each turn has Cascade. Oh my god. I have no idea what the value on that is for a foil. But, um... I mean, it sounds like having... I mean, having Cascade on each spell for an enchantment is pretty darn nice. I know there's ways to combo off of that really, really well. Alright, so my theory of the whole upside-down blue thing I don't think is actually uh, doing anything. You know, even if we don't get... The, oh, there, wait. Okay. Wetland Wayfarer. So this is a rare, older card. Then we got Vigor and Soul's Attendant. So double rare. There we go. Couple more packs left. Oh, these packs are so much fun to open. Except for, like, me, you know, not actually being able to open them because I'm clearly... I keep opening them upside down, too. Such a weird thing. It's so interesting, like, not seeing the same cards in every single pack. It makes them so much more fun to open. So Aether Spellbomb. It's, an un it's a common, but some of these commons actually have pretty decent value. We got uh, Sakashima the Imposer. I know that's a pretty decent valued card. And another Mythic. Okay. So we got uh, Kajiki Mirror Breaker. I think that's a $7 Mythic. And then we got a Foil uh, Future Sight. A Luma Thread Field. How many Mythics have we pulled? I know we're counting one as a Mythic. You know, let's just finish opening the packs, then we'll figure out how many Mythics we pulled. Oh my god. I'm gonna buy so many of these boxes. I imagine so many people are gonna be just purchasing and purchasing. So we got another upside down blue. Maybe we get the good luck. Maybe? Maybe? What we got? Thran Golem. Okay. Oh, Riss the Redeemed. I just purchased another one of these as well. Uh, that's another $20 uh, rare. We got Phyrexian Arena. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may draw a card and lose one life. And then Edelon of Rhetoric. Oh, man. We've pretty much pulled every single good card. Except, obviously, the most expensive card in the set. I mean, our first box, quite frankly, obviously could be a little bit better, but... On the grand scheme of things, with the chances of pulling the best card in the set with so many cards in the set, this is a really, a really high-value box. Domesticated Hydra. Ooh, Mishra's Bobble. I like the Bobble. We're going to put that there. Another Mythic, Aethros God of Passage. Then we got uh, Meandering Tower Shell. I don't know what the value on that is. And then a Foil Proclamation of Rebirth. I was really hoping to get, like, Teferi's Protection as well. Because that was a card that I actually needed for some Commander stuff. But maybe we've got one last pack. The value of this entire box will be popping up on the screen right now if you've been curious. 
I don't currently know what it's going to be, but I have a feeling it's going to be rather high, considering all the really good pulls we've gotten. Blasted Landscape, Perforos, God of the Forge. Not very expensive, but it is a card that I actually wanted to build a deck around. Um, and I've got the... I'm still waiting for the other one, so we've got Desolation Twin, and then another Mythic. Oh my god. Alright, so that's a another double Mythic box. This one is another foil, Karthus, Tyrant of Jund. A 7-7 seven, seven for 7. Other dragon creatures you control have haste. That's got to be a pretty decent dragon. So this is all the mythics we pulled out of our first mystery booster. So we got one, two, that's not a mythic. Three, four, five, six, seven. Counting this as a mythic, although it's not. Eight, nine, <laughs> ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen mythics in a 24-pack box. Good lord. That is amazing. I do hope you all enjoyed the video. Make sure to slap that like button. I'll see you all in the next one.